up divas and divos so it's your girl this real talk is going to be of me getting ready because i got a video to do not just a real talk video but i got some jeans to try on okay yes i got some jeans to try on some jeans from motique i think that's how you pronounce it because it sounds like boutique but it's with the m listen you guys know what jeans i'm talking about everybody on the yt everybody on the yt is wearing them like seriously everybody on youtube has these jeans so well, not everybody but just enough people like enough people got them okay so they reached out to me and asked me would I do a video review of their jeans. And I was like, girl, yes, I've been wanting to buy these. So they sent me four pair of their jeans. And I actually did have a pair on the other day, which was, I did post a picture on YouTube, not YouTube, on um, Instagram, okay. And these, dream, these jeans were the black ones. They were ripped up. They were distressed, honey. They cup they ripped a few times on me. Like seriously, they ripped a little bit more than what they did, what they were sent to me as. So by the time I had them off, they were stressed. Not dist not distressed, but stressed. They were stressed the fuck out. So yeah. But I like them. And you know what? Let me tell y'all. When I first got them in the mail, like I got the package on Sunday. The mailman delivered it to me on Sunday. Okay. And um I took them out the box and I was like, there's no way on God's green earth am I going to be able to fit my ass in these jeans. Like, there's no way. This waist looks like entirely too small. Like, there's no way. I'm not getting these jeans. Maybe the leg part because they stretch, but the waist part, girl, listen, I don't waist train. I think I have tried that enough times and listen, it's just not for me. It's, it's just really, really not for me. So... I mean, I want it to be for me, but the way my waist is set up is just not for me. So, you know, it is what it is. But surprisingly, to my surprise, they fit so nice. I was so shocked. I was looking at my own ass in the mirror in the stores. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you walk past the window or a mirror and you just check yourself out. You may check yourself out like a couple of times. Girl, I was checking myself out enough times like more than enough okay so i was very very pleasantly surprised with the jeans okay yes so them jeans are what's up um they remind me of jeans for fashion nova but um they're not but they remind me um the brands are similar they're the same brands like vibrant is the name of the pair of jeans i've seen those in stores out here in arizona like bb fashions or dds or whatever you call it bbb fashions and like other stores too so you know Oh, shit. So, you know, they are a brand, like, it's not their official own jeans. They're just jeans that, like, you know, they buy at wholesale price or whatever. But I like the jeans. They do fit nice. And I'm very happy about them. So I decided that I would, you know, do me a little try on today with them jeans with them jeans on and other than that nothing really has been popping you know i just been working and getting ready for my surgery which is the end of this month on the 29th so that's what i've been doing and also getting ready for thanksgiving who is getting ready for thanksgiving like it's like around the corner and don't get me wrong i love thanksgiving but geez it's so much fucking work like for real seriously like it's a lot of work and i hate to feel like i'm the only one that's doing all the work so and christmas i think this week i'm going to hang up my christmas decorations for sure so that is what i'm going to definitely be doing um I just want to get ready for it because it's going to take me a minute. So I'm going to get that done and, you know, get my lawn done and get my rugs clean before I start it. So, yes, all that is this week. I am a busy, busy woman. Like, serious. Busy. Okay. So, you guys, like, what am I drinking? In case you guys are wondering what I'm drinking. It is a Starbucks um, store-bought. Not from Starbucks. Store-bought Starbucks uh, Frappuccino chilled coffee drink and this one is uh, the mocha one I love these now. I don't really like the coffee flavor one because it tastes like the aftertaste to me tastes like lunch meat I know I'm probably like bugging out, but I swear you guys I drank one last night and it tastes it just kept reminding me of like 
like ham, like lunch meat after I would sip it. So I really wasn't feeling it. So I like the mocha one and the caramel one. The caramel one is good, like really good. So, and the hair that I'm wearing, you guys can't really see, it's in a bun. But this is my wig from BB Hair Wigs. I love it. It's the, um, it is the actual first one that I reviewed for them, which is the kinky straight one. This is the kinky straight one. And I don't have the baby hairs plastered down, except for my little sideburns. But they're not plastered right now. But they will be by the time, hopefully, this video is over. But the hairs look like they're smashed down only because I sleep with this headband on that will keep your wig in place. Like, it's just a regular headband, but the, the fabric is, like, amazing. So I put it on along with my silk scarf that I wrap on. So, you guys, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to do, you can always send me an email at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk, so that way I know that it is official Real Talk. And if you want to change the names of the folks, the folks that you are gossiping about, spilling the tea about, and you know all that good stuff, you can go ahead and let me know in the video, or excuse me, in the email, that you have went ahead and changed the names already. And if you don't tell me that, I'm going to just... Be suspect to think that you you didn't change the names and I'm going to change them myself. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, I will change the names myself just because I don't want nobody feeling any type of way and feel like somebody knew that they was talking about them. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, you can go ahead and send me a real talk. And, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you guys are the father. I will change the names in that email. So, on that note, let's get into this real talk, okay? Okay, you guys already know what I tell y'all about friends, fair weather friends, best friends, friends that you've had for like ever, or you feel like you've had them forever, felt like they were still your friend because y'all grew up together, spent your whole lives, got the diapers changed together, started walking together, crawling, going to kindergarten, all that cool stuff. You know, friends, you know, we, we grow out of friends just that easy. So this one is about that. Why is I not focused, focused? I'm thinking this is going to work. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to read this real talk real quick. Okay. So it's a little bit long. So just bear with me. And I'm going to just read this as I go along. Hopefully I can do my makeup at the same time while I am reading this long email. Okay. Hey, Diva. I've been wanting to write you for a while and I finally got the time to do it. Please bear with me because this is a long one so that you and the other Divas can fully understand. I have to start at the very beginning. Charmaine, name already changed. Okay. I don't know why I'm not staying in focus. I have met in El um, Charmaine, name or name has already been changed. Charmaine and I have met in elementary school and quickly became the best of friends. We were so close, we literally considered each other family. In high school, we began making plans for college. We both applied to a local college with hopes of attending the same school and becoming roommates. Well, things didn't go as planned because Charmaine was the only one who had got accepted. After graduation, I ended up attending college down south and Charmaine ended up at a community college due to financial reasons. Although we were over six hours away from each other, we remain very close high school graduation so I like this because she puts bullet points in there high school graduation after two years at the community college Charmaine decided to reapply to our school of choice when we found out she got in for the second time I was so happy for her a few days later I secretly decided to reapply why home while home on summer break I received my acceptance letter then I couldn't wait to share the news with Charmaine our dreams were finally coming true a few days before school started we signed a lease together at an apartment down the street from our school we moved in with nothing but clothes and mattresses on the floor but we made it work my mom helped us a lot and after a few months the apartment was fully furnished Charmaine ended up getting an internship at her dream job but the position required her to work nights so I really got to see her between work and school, we both became really busy, but I still tried to make it a point to spend time with her when our schedules would allow it. Us in college. 
She began hanging out with her co-workers more and more. She would invite me sometimes, but I often felt out of place. After a while, she just stopped asking me. Due to financial reasons, we both ended up moving back in with our parents, but we were only about 15 minutes away from each other. Initially, we spent a lot of time together, but then it was like she just dropped, stopped calling. In efforts to reconnect, I suggested we attend an upcoming musical festival. She agreed and sounded excited about the idea. A few days before the tickets went on sale, she asked if some of her co-workers could come and get and come along and it would be a fun girls trip. I wasn't too thrilled about the idea, but I agreed anyway. When the tickets went on sale, I let her know we needed to buy them ASAP, but it seems like she and her friends were dragging their feet. So I really got discouraged about the whole trip. After hearing nothing from her about the festival for several weeks, I gave up all hopes of going. A couple days before the festival, Charmaine reached out to me to let me know that some tickets were still available and she planned on asking around to see if anyone could cover her shift so me and her could go. I was hopeful, but when I didn't hear back, I figured she was unable to get off of work. That weekend, I was scrolling through social media and stumbled upon some video footage a friend of ours had posted from the festival. When I clicked play, guess who I saw twerking to Meek Mill's performance? Charmaine. I quickly went to her page and found endless photos of her and her co-workers at the festival. Charmaine at the festival. April, I was pissed, but honestly, I was more hurt than anything. I couldn't believe she, of all people, my best friend, would pull a stunt like this. I waited until the next day to confront her about it, and when I asked her, her response was, My co-workers invited me last minute, so I came with them. I didn't know you still wanted to go with me. I thought you were coming with your boyfriend. Charmaine knew damn well we were supposed to go to that festival together. My boyfriend was never a part of the plans. Since she was trying to bullshit me, I just decided to end the call. No sense in arguing with her. A couple weeks later, Charmaine came over to my house to apologize um, and called the situation a misunderstanding. I forgave her and our friendship continued as normal. A few months later, Charmaine's college graduation was approaching. She asked me if I'd be willing to do her makeup on graduation morning. I agreed. Since the graduates had to be there at 8 a.m., her dad had purchased a hotel room for us to stay in the night before graduation day. The day before graduation, I packed up my makeup kit and overnight bag before heading to work. My plan was to come to the hotel straight after I got off of work. Around 7 p.m., Charmaine texted me stating she had left something at home and had to go back to pick it up. Mind you, we both lived about an hour away from the hotel, so I would so it would take about two round trips for her to get back. Two hours round trip for her to get back. I admit I was a little annoyed with her because I was almost at the hotel when she told me. I decided to go get something to eat while I waited for Charmaine. I thought about checking in myself at the hotel, but then I realized I couldn't because the hotel room was in her name. After two hours passed, I decided to call Charmaine and got no response. I didn't think anything of it at first, but then I realized 30 minutes had passed and she hadn't called me back. I started to get upset because she was MIA. After three hours of waiting at the restaurant, I decided to head home. Just as I was pulling up to my house, Charmaine calls. She immediately apologized and said she couldn't find the item she was looking for and that's what was taking her so long. I told her that I was already home and didn't plan on making that drive again and I was willing to wake up early to meet her at the hotel to do her makeup for her graduation. Around midnight, she texted me saying I didn't have to do her makeup in the morning because she was staying home instead of going back to the hotel. The next morning, I was on Facebook and ended up coming across pictures that someone had tagged Charmaine in. When I clicked on the photos, I saw Charmaine and her co-workers all dressed in a hotel room about to head out. I couldn't believe she had bold-faced lied to me. I was so hurt after seeing those photos, I didn't even want to attend her graduation. Charmaine at the hotel. Once again, Charmaine ditched me to hang out with her co-worker friends. I still hadn't fully got over the previous incidents, and then this happened. Since it was an important day for Charmaine, I decided to suck it up and still attend her graduation and ended up doing her makeup for her graduation dinner. Charmaine and I at her graduation dinner. So basically, these bullet points are pointing to the pictures that she has below for me. After her graduation, I never brought up the photos or how she made me feel about the hotel situation. I just distanced myself, and to be completely honest, I don't think she even noticed. Besides birthday tests to each other, we, even, we haven't truly spoken in about almost three years. Do you think our friendship is past the point of no repair? Is it even worth reaching out? Has it been too long? I honestly feel like I have no room in her life now that she has this new set of friends. Any advice would be helpful. Thanks for your time. I know this was really long. Well, it actually wasn't really long, girlfriend, but I will say this. Friends, I think a lot of people 
you know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think a lot of people put the word friends, they just emphasize it a little bit too much. Like, seriously, everybody thinks somebody is their friend when they're not. Like, it's not even that they're not your friend like that. It's just like y'all grow apart. I think, like, people actually really do emphasize the word friendship. Like, okay, like I was saying, I get it. I fucking get it. You've been friends since when? Since y'all was in school, grade school together. That's good. It's all good. That's friendship, okay? But when we get older, we kind of like grow out of our friendships and it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. Like we, we grow out of friendships. People, you know, fail to realize that when you get older, the things that you were interested in as a kid or as a young person, they don't become interesting anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like take that for example, take for example, I'm going to just give you guys this as an example, okay? So yesterday, um, my daughter, Tati, was taking my grandson, Tinky, to either Chuck E. Cheese or Peter Piper Pizza. Now, you guys know that's a place for kids to hang out. It's like an indoor park, whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't really think it's any fun. I'm not, like, into it. But, you know, you do shit for the kids because this is what they like to do. And, you know, you give them some type of entertainment, okay? And this is part of just you know, being a parent and taking your kids to somewhere where they want to go. Not necessarily that your ass want to be there, but, you know, to me, it hasn't been fun. Um, I find the part to be fun when my kids are having fun. Like, I like to see my grandson having fun and enjoying himself or Mumsy having fun and enjoying herself. You know, that's that's what it's all about. But I'm not like, like, old oh, tickle pink to be there, but I'm going to do this for my kids. Okay? Okay? So I really don't find it to be amusing. But anyway, like I said, it's for kids. It's something you do with your kids. So anyway, Tati had asked me, told me she was going to take Tinky. And if, if Mumsy wants to come along, you know, which is Tati and Tinky. If Mumsy wants to come along, she's more than welcome. Well, I told Tati that she, I mean, told Mumsy, you know, I let Mumsy know that Tati would either be going to Chuck E. Cheese or... Peter Piper's Pizza. So, you know, Mumsy did go there a few months ago for a school function, after school function with um, her bestie, Christina. This is like a couple months ago when it went. Um, they went to Peter Piper Pizza. It was to raise money for the school. So, you know, parents come out at the after the evening event. And I didn't go, but I let her go with her friend, her best friend, Christina, and Christina's mom because Christina's mom is on the PTA. So, of course, she was there. You know, and I gave Mumsy money for it and shit like that now you know these places are basically you know these kids play little games video games or whatever and then they have the opportunity to get a prize after they get all of these fucking tickets they get a fucking prize that that looks like it's from the dollar tree like straight up okay like all this fucking money i spent on these games for you to play to get these lame ass tickets to get this lame ass prize you could have I could have took you to the Dollar Tree, but it's something fun for the kids to do, so you do it anyway, even though you know that they are really scamming you. So anyway, I thought she had a good time a few months ago. I didn't even, you know, I asked her. She said she had fun. It's probably because her best friend was there and her other little friends from school was there, you know, so they was probably sitting around gossiping, spilling tea. So anyway, last night I asked her, do you want to go? Well, not last night, but yesterday afternoon. Um, do you want to go with Tinky and Tati to either Chuck E. Cheese or Peter Piper's Pizza? She's not sure which one she's going to go to, but either way, I think Chuck E. Cheese is a lot more fun than Peter Piper's, but, you know. So, Tati ended up going to Chuck E. Cheese, but anyway, so Mumsy was like, no, I don't want to go. And I'm like, why? She's like, those places aren't fun anymore. And I'm like, what do you mean they're not fun anymore? Yeah, they're just not fun anymore. I said, okay. And I'm saying to myself, I don't know when they ever was fun, but, you know, you got your opinion. She said, I don't know if it's me or the place, but I just don't find it to be fun anymore. I said, it's not the place, it's you. And she said, it's me? I said, yeah, you've basically grown out of that. You're 11 years old, and you've grown out of those places. You got older. Those things don't interest you anymore. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, oh, okay, well, at least it's not the place. It's me, huh? And, you know, basically I explained to her, like, you know, when we get older, certain things that we were interested in as 
a youth or at a certain age don't interest us anymore. That's like, take me for example. I used to love to eat freaking sweet cereal and cakes and shit like that. Like, now if you try to give me some freaking fruity pebbles right now, I'll probably be pissed the fuck off. Like, nah, I'm not about to eat that shit. Like, can I get some freaking special K, some Kellogg, something like that? Like, can I get like a real, a grown ups person's, you know what I'm saying? Can I please get something grown up? So, you know, basically, it's like kind of like the same thing. You guys grow out of each other. And that's okay. You know, that's that's a part of life. So, like I was saying to Mumsy, you grow up. You grow out of things. And that's just to be expected. That's even like with, you know, friendships. Sorry to say. But even with friendships, you guys grow out of, you know, friendships. It's not even that you guys grow out of friendships. It's that you guys grow apart. You guys, let me just say this for an example. You guys have been friends since y'all were younger. And I'm not really sure if you guys, you know, were kids that were like in elementary school together. But it really doesn't matter. Even high school is still considered like your youth. You know what I'm saying? That's when you are growing up. You're getting to know yourself and how things are. You might have the same things in common as a young teen or as a teenager. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's when you are learning who you are, you're finding out who you are, you're learning yourself. And that's the same thing like with college. We we enter into college as young adults, as young people, as teenagers, as just the young youth, you know what I'm saying? We enter into these walks of life as just like, you know, I'm just trying to fix the lighting, um, as young people, as young adults. And then we find ourselves, we learn who we are. And it's not like that she deliberately to me is not wanting to hang out with you but she has been hanging around her friends charmaine has been hanging around her friends so basically like this charmaine is kind of like ditching she didn't say her name but we're gonna call her lisa charmaine has been ditching lisa so they've been friends since probably like middle school or whatever, they, they graduated from high school together. They may have been friends before that, but you know, they both wanted to go to these dream school colleges, be able to go together, you know what I'm saying? So that way they can fulfill their dreams together, probably hang out together and just do shit together like best friends do at an early age okay and then you guys of course have made these plans like oh we're going to be inseparable we're going to always be together and you probably made these plans since you guys were in elementary school or middle school or whatever grade school you guys were in you guys have made these plans together that child are always going to be together y'all gonna to go to the same school you're gonna live in the same town you guys are going to have the same job y'all gonna marry each other's are, you know, your boyfriends or boy husbands are going to be the best of friends. Either way, you guys have made these plans at a young age, okay? And eventually, when you guys grow up, you know, of course, the things that you guys have planned to do at a younger age are not always the same things. Like, you're not going to live up to that, meaning, and it's not a bad thing that you've not lived up to it. So, say you guys both wanted to be a nurse, but then Charmaine decided, well, Lisa, you still want to be a nurse, but I want to be a doctor. So, you know, now we are both studying for medicine, but I have a little bit more intense studying to do because I'm going to be a doctor, and the crowd of people that I'm around are totally different people opposed to the people that you may hang around because we work together in a certain environment and granted when it all started y'all was at the same apartment y'all lived together you guys hung out and then what happened was Charmaine got an internship at her dream job and what happened on set at the dream job was Charmaine started meeting people who were also interested in the same exact things as she was which were the people from her job and they got acquainted they got to know one another they got very familiar and they started you know conversing at work exchanging phone numbers hanging out at lunch and they realized that they had a lot of things in common maybe not just the job but just a lot of other things in common as well. And what happened was, you know, they became friends at work and they started hanging out with one another. Now, that's nothing to say that it's a negative thing because as an adult, this is what you do. You become friends with co-workers. And I'm not saying that's always a good thing to be your co-workers friends. But you know what? It's not a bad thing either. As long as you guys are not fucking losing work time or it's not disrupting your workflow or, you know, situations like that, then I think, like, it's a healthy relationship to be a friend 
at work. I'm not saying be everybody's motherfucking friend at work, but you can be some people's friends at work, you know. I'm not saying push everybody away. Don't be antisocial. But, you know, make you some friends. This is work. But also realize that this is where I'm here to get money. Now, if I got some people at work that's just shady, well, I guess we can't be friends. But if you do find someone of interest at your job place, that you share a lot in common and there's nothing wrong with hanging out. But seems like Lisa is having an issue with the way that Charmaine is going about it. And I'm not saying ain't nothing wrong with that because I got an issue with it too. Like, I don't think it's right. So, you know, Charmaine and Lisa have been friends for so long and Charmaine starts hanging out with her co-workers. At first, Lisa was invited to like the girls' night out, like, you know, hanging out at the club or going to the movies or whatever they were doing. She was being invited and then slowly but surely, she became uninvited, meaning she wasn't being invited like that anymore. Charmaine was not inviting her, was not inviting Lisa like that anymore. And Lisa started feeling some type of way. She started getting her feelings about it. And I get that because we do get jealous as people. We do feel like certain people are our best friends forever. And you know what I'm saying? And we don't want anyone else to come in place. I'll be the first one to tell you that's how I would feel about Robin. Love kisses. Like she did have this friend. I'm not sure if they're still friends, but that's not about this. You know what I'm saying? But when, <clears throat> excuse me. When her and her friend would hang out, like, they would go places. Trust and believe, I would feel some type of way, like, seeing them hanging out together. Girl, let me tell y'all, I would be kind of tight about it. And I hate to be, like, a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy, but I just didn't like the bitch. Like, for real. I didn't like her because I felt like she was taking my friend away from me. That's my friend. Even though we lived another state over from one another, I still felt some type of way. And why? I'm feeling some type of way about my motherfucking eyebrow right now, too. But we're just going to leave this. I'm not going to fight with it or anything like that. So I, I did start feeling some type of way about her friend and her hanging out. And I felt like she was taking, you know my Robin away from me, okay? But either here nor there, I was an adult about it to a, to a certain extent, okay? To a certain extent. And I'm, I'm sorry if I appear like a yellowish color, but this is my vlogging camera, so, you know, I'm not really going to get, like, the best lighting unless I set it up, set it up. But anyway, so my, my thoughts are this, okay? Now here, the next scenario. They were supposed to go to a music festival together, and it was Charmaine's, well, excuse me, it was Lisa's idea to attend this music festival together with one another, only because they kind of grew a little bit distant, you know, financial reasons, they had to move out of the apartment and move back home with their parents, but they were only a 15 minute distance away from one another, even though they moved back home, which is not a bad thing. That's cool. 15 minutes is nothing. Okay. So they still had the opportunity to hang out with one another and all that good stuff, which they kind of did somewhat. But you know, once again, they became distanced from one another. And Lisa thought it would be a great idea to go to a music festival with Charmaine, she and Charmaine, and just kind of like get a little bit closer again and rekindle their friendship, you know, even though they didn't, you know, leave on bad terms, she just missed her friend. So she invited Charmaine to this festival and asked, did she want to go? Just her and Lisa. And, you know, Charmaine did ask, is it okay if some of my coworkers go along? This could be like a, a nice girls trip. Now, Lisa did not want the girls from Charmaine's job to go because it was something that she had planned for her and Charmaine, but she wasn't too thrilled about it, but she still agreed, you know, okay, let them come along. Maybe this won't be too bad. You know what I mean? I get to see my friends. Maybe I get to meet some new people and this could probably turn out great. So she let... You know, Charmaine know the festival tickets were going on sale, so that way Charmaine could basically relate it back to her co-workers. Well, they were dragging their feet, and at the last moment, you know, Charmaine called Lisa and said, there's still some tickets left, we can still go, I'm just going to make sure that someone can cover my shift at work, and we can go. Lisa was happy, but she didn't hear back from Charmaine and you know so she took it as Charmaine couldn't attend she couldn't get off of work well guess what hunties to her surprise as she was scrolling through social media okay guess who she seen twerking to Meek Mills Charmaine at the music festival with her co-workers okay so um yeah 
once she she confronted Charmaine, Charmaine let her know, oh, I thought you was going with your boyfriend. First of all, let me tell you something. If I send me and you, girl, and then you say, well, can some of my coworkers go along so it could be a girl's trip, then you knew damn fucking well it wasn't about me, you, and my boyfriend going. You just said a girl's trip, and you also said co-workers. It can be a girl's trip. Okay. Then when you called me back to say there's still some tickets for sale because we didn't, you know, jump to it when they first went on sale, there's still a few tickets left. You and I can still go. Lisa agreed to that and Charmaine said, well, let me make sure that I can get my shift covered. So, Charmaine, you knew damn well that Lisa was not taking her boyfriend with you guys on the motherfucking trip. Straight up. So, what did she do? Charmaine turns around and goes with her co-workers from work, okay? So, to me, that seems like an excuse of not to hang out with Lisa. If Charmaine don't want to hang out with her anymore, then my advice to Charmaine would be to just let Lisa know, hey, I found a new group of friends. Um, I still love you as a friend, but I really do enjoy hanging out with them. And, I mean, we can hang out from time to time. You know, just say something polite like that, not stand the girl up. Now, to me, I would have definitely been pissed the fuck off. I would have been mad. My feelings, I, listen, I get in my feelings, so I would have definitely been in my feelings about the whole situation. Could you imagine if you, you asked your best friend, hey, girl, you want to go to a concert together? You know what I'm saying? You guys plan something. Oh, yeah, girl, let's go. And then she turned around and said, well, is it all right if I invite such and such? We can make this a girl's trip, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, mind you, you don't know these people at her place of employment, but, you know, you do know that she hangs out with them, and this is your best friend, and you do anything to make her happy. But you don't hear back from her about when you guys are going to go or about purchasing the tickets. So you assume that she cannot go. But then you turn around and you don't get to go because she's not going. Because this trip was just basically a music concert for you and your bestie. Now you're not going because your bestie can't go. So what do you do? You stay at home. You don't go. But then you turn around and you see on social media that this bitch that you invited is twerking. And she's twerking to music at that concert that you guys were supposed to attend to but she's there with her co-workers and her excuse was oh i thought you was going with your boyfriend and, and my co-workers asked me last minute no bitch you and your co-workers had this all planned out now me personally i'd have been pissed off about it i'd have been in my feelings and i would have felt some type of way like all right you know what i'm not fucking with you this would be me i'm not fucking with you but let me take the more adult, you know, route to this and say, okay, I'll accept your apology. You know, you came over, you apologized to me. It was a misunderstanding. Not really sure how, but I get that, you know, it was a misunderstanding. We all have misunderstandings. Now, mind you, we made up, we back to friendship and it's another situation to where you're asking me to hook you up and do your makeup for your graduation from school. I agree on this. Your dad, okay, now this is me talking about Charmaine and Lisa. Charmaine's father agreed to pay for a hotel room, which was closer by the guy, um, by the graduation. It was about an hour's drive from the home. So he decided to, you know, purchase a hotel room for Lisa and her best friend, Charmaine, which is Charmaine's father. So that way, Lisa could do Charmaine's makeup for the graduation and so forth. So they decided to both meet up at the hotel after work lisa gets there and charmaine is like i left something at home i gotta go back and get it i'll be back so mind you it's an hour's drive back to home from the hotel that's two hours and she's right she don't hear from lisa excuse me lisa don't hear from charmaine charmaine is telling lisa you know i apologize for not returning your call i left something at home by this time lisa's like well i, I went back home i waited around for like three to four hours i couldn't get in the hotel room because you know it's under your name your dad put it under your name so you know i'll just come early in the morning and do your makeup what happened charmaine is like you don't have to come early in the morning because i'm gonna just stay home Next day, before graduation, what does Lisa see? Her best friend, who was supposed to be at the hotel with her, is down there, dressed up, girls' night out, at that hotel, with her co-workers. Okay? Now, at this point, Lisa don't even want to go to Charmaine's 
freaking graduation because she feels some type of way. But she sucked it up like a real trooper and she attended it. She didn't take it no type of way. She attended her besties graduation, smile and all, and you know, attended it. But she was kind of distanced at the dinner. She didn't really do much talking to her. And Charmaine really probably didn't even notice that Lisa was not even really focused or conversing with her like that. Now, here's the kicker. Lisa didn't say nothing to Charmaine about the whole situation, about the graduation and the hotel room, how she didn't see the pictures on social media of Charmaine dressed up with the girls from work at the hotel room that she and her were supposed to share the night before graduation. They were supposed to share their hotel room. And also on top of that, Lisa's best friend, Charmaine, who was supposed to be at the hotel room because it was her graduation, lied to her and told her that she's going to be at home. She's not going to be at the hotel room. You don't have to come too early in the morning and do my makeup at the hotel because I'm just going to stay at home. So basically she made it seem like her father wasted money renting a hotel room for her and she's not going to be there and you know, you don't have to come too early. Now, I would have believed that. But then when I see your pictures on social media the next day and you and your coworkers are at this hotel room, turned up, dressed up, about to go out for girls night out, I would have really been in my feelings, okay? Yeah, I would have attended your graduation because it's something special and I'm not going to be that petty. But here's the problem. Lisa did not communicate to Charmaine about what she saw on social media. Now, you know, social media will fuck you up. Like, literally, it will fuck up your life sometimes. It'll fuck up your love life. It can fuck up relationships. It can also fuck up jobs, family, money. It, social media is like a poison. It's a drug. Okay, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. A lot of beef and misunderstandings and breakups and job losses are due to social media. And it's unfortunate because when I was growing up, we didn't have that shit. So if we confronted somebody, it was through face to face or verbally over the phone. It was never intended to be on social media. You know, social media wasn't back then. But, you know, social media now is like the big thing and everybody wants to be on social media and voice their opinions about how they feel or et cetera, et cetera. So it's the rave. You know, social media is the shit. Everybody wants to be a part of it. Everybody wants to be on social media. But to, to, to lie to your best friend and tell them that, you know, you're going to stay at home, you're not going to go, you're going to just chill and you don't have to come early is kind of like, a bold faced lie. So when Lisa attended Charmaine's graduation and graduation dinner, she never mentioned it to her. Me personally, I would have mentioned it. I wouldn't have mentioned it at that moment because this is your special moment and we got everybody around, meaning your family is here, you know, you're probably your co workers are there too, and friends and family is there. And on top of that, bitch, I'm not about to embarrass myself over you and your bold faced lies. But she never said nothing to Charmaine about the shit. Listen, let me tell you something. Communication is the key to everything. Regardless if you piss the fuck off, it's still communicating. Because sometimes when you don't say shit to people and you just keep that shit the fuck inside, it just festers, okay? It festers, it boils up, if the flame gets higher, your tolerance and anger gets a lot higher, and it makes you feel a certain type of way towards the person. Me, personally, I would have definitely said something to Charmaine's ass about it because that's wrong. To me, that's dead ass wrong. Now, y'all ain't spoke to each other in like three years. You wondering, can you mend the friendship? Is the friendship gone? You know what I'm saying? It ain't even that the friendship is gone, sweetheart. This is what it is. Y'all done grown apart from each other. And that's to be expected. She done got into her own field of work, which is a good thing. It's a blessing. And I'm happy for her. And I'm happy for you. But y'all grow apart. I had to explain this to my son, Wuzzle, because he was upset because... The friends that he used to hang with when we first moved here, he don't hang with them anymore. You know what I mean? He said that nobody's got time for him. They either got girlfriends or they too busy. You know, they got jobs or, you know, just like he, he has a job too, but it's not the same. And now he's only got this one best friend who he's always hanging with. And it's just not the same. You know, he don't get to see his friends that much as other friends that they both used to hang out with. And he feels some type of weight. I said, Wuzzle, it's not that they don't have time for you, but 
you guys met each other when y'all was in high school, okay? And y'all had stuff in common then, which was basically nothing. Y'all, none of y'all had a job. None of y'all had, you know, apartments. or Y'all were younger. You guys didn't really see your future as something really important. You seen it, but you didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? You guys were younger. You guys, all you guys wanted to do was basically hang out because you're kids. And there's nothing wrong with that. But now that you've gotten older, of course, I said to him, people grow apart. It's not that nobody is anyone's friend anymore. It's that people grow apart. As we get older, we don't have the same friends. Okay, when I go to my mom's house, those people that were my friends then, okay, the little bit that I did have, we're not friends anymore. And it's not that we're not friends anymore, but... When I see you, I see you. I say hi. I speak when I see you. I say hello. But I'm not saying to you, girl, let's go hang out, okay? You know what I'm saying? Let's go Let's go to the mall or let's go hang out. Let's sit on the bench. I'm not about to do all of that. When I see them, I'm just like, hey, how you doing? Give them a hug, kiss, and just, you know, keep it pushing. I go about my business. But I'm not about to sit there and say, let's hang out. We don't have the same things in common anymore. And that's to be expected. We grow apart. It's not that you're not friends with her anymore. It's the fact that you guys have matured. Now, should you mend the friendship? You know what? I'm not saying you have to mend it because they're probably never broken up. But what I do suggest is I would suggest that you do reach out to Charmaine. I would suggest that you do tell her, hey, you know, I just wanted to check on you and see how you were doing and see what was up with you and how's life. You can go. You can always reach out to her. Not saying that you guys have to be the best of friends and hang out and go to the park and movies in a club together and sleep over each other's house, but you can still be cordial to one another and you can still reach out and still be friends, but just realize that you guys have a different group of friends and that's to be expected. When we get older, we have a different group of friends and that's just life in general. That's just happens. That's just what happens when we become adults. When we become adults and we realize that our lives are in different paths, our friends change, our frame of thinking change, we're definitely not the same people anymore. We have matured. And what I would highly suggest to you, Lisa, is this. Don't go reaching out to her and keep your feelings to yourself. Meaning, you already know how it made you feel from the jump. That she done lied to you, bold face lied to you about the hotel room and also about the concert, the, the music festival. Now, you let that one slip, meaning you forgave her and you looked past that. But she did it again. She did it again with the graduation in the hotel. Now, you went to her graduation with not ill intentions, but you were upset. So that way it, it kind of distanced you from communicating with her there along with anybody else. You kept yourself distant. Now that I would say was okay to do because like I said, you don't want to bring any kind of bad karma up to anyone during their time or their special moment, you know what I'm saying? Wedding, graduation, anything like that. You don't want to bring bad karma up. Like, bitch, I saw you on Instagram last night with your besties or your other friends from work twerking and shit. And we were supposed to be together. And I don't like that shit while she, while she at her reception, wedding reception. You can't bring up shit like that. But what I would do is I would reach out to her through social media and let her know, hey, girl, you was on my mind. I was thinking about you. I miss the old days. I miss you you as a person you know what I mean I just wanted to let you know that I think about you often and please you know reach out to me here's my number I'd love to see how you're doing meet up with one another maybe we can hang out do something girl like you know what I mean hey it's nothing wrong with that but I would also let her know that what you did on your graduation night or not graduation eve night was very hurtful to me. I didn't want to say anything to you at the time because that was your special moment. But I just feel as an adult and as a grown up now that I really need to mention it. And, you know, I just want to let you know how it made me feel. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go about it like vulgar. You don't have to go about approaching the situation harsh. But just know that I wouldn't go into reaching out to her and keeping that to myself because to me that would be fake and phony. You would just be just as fake and phony as Charmaine, Lisa, if you never said anything to her about the situation, okay? That was the number one issue to me. Like, I'm going to say something to you. I know it may hurt and it might cause some friction between us, but 
this friction was caused because of how you did it, how you went about, you know, being sneaky and shit and not, you know, let me know, hey, girl, there's nothing wrong with people making friends at their job. We were best friends in high school does not necessarily mean we're going to be best friends for the rest of our lives. Now, granted, some people do. Some people be, remain best friends for the best rest of their lives from kids, from childhood until adulthood. And you know what? I commend them. I commend them. Not saying that's a real best friend. Not saying that, you know, you ain't got no life. But I commend you if you can be best friends from childhood until adulthood and still spend time with, with one another. I commend you. Who wouldn't love to have a friend like that? Shit, that's not even a friend no more. That's more or less like a family member. That's like a sister. You know what I'm saying? But it don't always work out like that. You know, and it's unfortunate that we expect it to, but it don't always work out like that because, like I said, as an adult, we change. And as a teenager or a middle school person, middle school kid, of course we say we're going to be best friends forever. We're going to live in the same house. We're going to marry best friends, meaning your, your husband and her husband are going to be the best of friends or brothers or some shit like that. That's how sometimes people think. And it's not reality. It's not reality. Okay? It's not rational thinking. But that's how we think as young adults. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be someone's best friend for the rest of their lives and grow up and do things together. But you got to realize that there are other people out there. The circle is going to get a little bit bigger and it's going to get a little bit smaller and some people are going to grow from one another. You and Charmaine might have liked to do certain things as a teenager together. Charmaine ain't into that shit no more. Or you're not into that shit no more, Lisa. It works out both ways. You change. We all change. We all move on. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we're no longer friends. And the one person has a vendetta against the other. It just means that we have matured. Now, as far as Charmaine and the shit that she did, I really honestly feel like she should have been an adult about it. Instead of being sneaky behind your back and going to the concert and going to the hotel room. I think she just should have been an adult about it. But then again, maybe she took the easy way out. Some people just don't understand that, you know, it's easier to communicate with one another versus doing something sneaky behind their back. Maybe she just didn't know how to approach a situation and say, well, listen, I just want to hang out with my coworkers from work. Don't know if you'd be interested in that. She could approach the situation like that and invite at least a you know what I'm saying? And her to hang out and have a girl's night before the graduation. She could have did that. But instead, Charmaine took the wrong road. She took the wrong motherfucking exit and never said anything to Lisa about girl's night at the hotel, you know, graduation eve. She never said anything. What did she do? She made up a big fucking story about she forgot something at home. She had to go back and get it. I don't think that bitch left anything at home except for her motherfucking ID to go out and hang out with her best, her co-worker best friends and get drunk. That's the only fucking thing I think she left the fuck at home was her motherfucking ID. Nothing containing to what she needed for graduation day. That's just my opinion. But me personally, I don't really like liars, okay? I don't like liars. If we best friends and we had a connection and we shared a lot of shit together, bitch, don't start lying to me now about shit. If you feel some type of way, feel some type of way. If you don't want me to hang out with you and your motherfucking co-workers at work, then be a real motherfucker. Be real about your shit and say, hey, listen, I want to hang out with my best friends from work or, you know what I'm saying? I want to hang out with my co-workers. I don't know if you'd be interested, but, you know, it's just us. They invited me, so I'm just going to hang out with them. Don't lie. Make up stories like when people start making up shit like that and lies and stuff that start making me feel like what else did you fucking lie about you know like seriously what the fuck else have you lied about you know you're telling me oh you forgot something at home one little lie can turn into like this huge thing to where listen it's a big misunderstanding it's more than just misunderstanding it becomes some bullshit and everyone starts getting their feelings about shit and then shit gets all twisted be real about your shit and just be honest to the person and let them know, like, listen, I love you. We besties and all that good stuff, but I really just want to hang out with my coworkers from work today or, you know what I'm saying, hang out with them. Don't lie and make up stories and then you make the person go out of their way by doing your makeup, driving an hour away from their home just to be let down and lied to. Like, that was the part that really, really got me. But also the part, like, this bitch, if you're going to be real sneaky and decide that you want to hang out with somebody else, don't be posting pictures up on social media where your best friend, your so-called best friend is going to see them. Like me personally, if I decided that I didn't want to hang out with you, but I'm going to go hang out with somebody else. And I told you that I was 
I just wouldn't post the pictures on social media. Like, cause I know social media. You my friend, we besties, or we supposed to be best friends. I know you look at my social media and we have friends in common. Bitch, I'm not about to take no pictures of myself hanging out at the club, hanging out at the concert that you and I was initially supposed to go to, and I told you I wasn't going. I wouldn't do shit like that. I wouldn't post up no fucking pictures. I'll just keep that shit to myself. But that's where Charmaine fucked up at. She posted up pictures with her and her friends at, you know what I'm saying, at the fucking concert. Not only did Charmaine post up pictures, but like I said, Lisa initially found the video of Charmaine twerking through somebody else, through a mutual friend. And what did Charmaine, what did Lisa do? She went to Charmaine's social media page and seen photos of Charmaine all on social media at this festival that she and Charmaine were supposed to attend together with her co-workers. And then, once again... Same scenario, I and you, Charmaine and Lisa, were supposed to be at the hotel room that Charmaine's father paid for the night before graduation. And what did Charmaine do? Told her she was going to stay home because she didn't feel like driving back because she forgot something. And then what do you do, Charmaine? You go on social media and you post pictures on your own fucking page of you and your co-workers dressed up at the hotel room now mind you i don't know if it was that hotel because she never specified if it was that hotel she said in a hotel room i would have just guessed automatically that it was the hotel room that my father paid for because why waste it you know what i'm saying but you did didn't you tell me that you wasn't going nowhere you was gonna stay at home but here it is you and your your co-worker best friends is dressed up all y'all in the motherfucking hotel room it's like five of them bitches Y'all chilling, y'all about to go out, and here it is. I'm sitting here, then drove back and forth for you to do your makeup, and you now at the hotel with your work friends, and y'all about to go hang out. But I'm not invited. But you done told me a bold face lie. That shit is not cool. I would not have liked that at all. Me, personally, I would have been in my real feelings about that shit, and I would have felt some type of way, like, really, though? This is how we doing it? I may or may not have attended the graduation. I don't know. But then again, like, I'm not going to be spiteful to the person but who's to say that i'm going to attend the graduation i may feel like you know what let them bitches from your job that you was with the night before attend hang out with them let them bitches do your makeup you know that's probably what i would have did i wouldn't have done her makeup i probably would have been real grimy not even grimy but petty and not did her makeup and let her know i'm sorry i got something to do point blank period you know what i'm saying how would y'all take it what would y'all do so yeah, you guys, sorry I had to answer my phone call. You know, my husband be on his lunch, so he always calls me. But anyway, so like I was saying, oh, now I want to come in clear. I've got and did my fucking makeup. Like, wow. So anyway, like I was saying, like, seriously, like, I just think, like, Charmaine, the actual perpetrator in this, she kind of went about the whole situation wrong. Um, And each person takes something totally different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, each person takes a situation differently. The way I may choose to, you know, deal with something, the way I may choose to deal with something may not be the way that Lisa want to deal with it. She may want to deal with the total opposite. Me, personally, I may be a little bit more aggressive in a situation when I'm dealing with it because feelings are involved. And, like, I don't think that you guys have, like, fell apart. It's that you've grown apart. Like I was saying, like, just because you go to school with somebody and like I said, you got your diapers changed with them does not necessarily mean that y'all are going to be friends forever, you know? And sometimes, like I said, that's a blessing that you do. But you have to realize people grow from one another. That's just like with marriages. It's unfortunate that people get married and they end up growing apart because their interests fade. They don't have shit in common. They may have too many issues in the marriage. It's all different factors in the reasons why people grow apart. You know, and I think a lot of it has to do with maturity and even with marriages when they end, people grow apart. Maturity, just, just because you're older does not mean necessarily that you're mature. Just because you're in a marriage does not necessarily mean that you're mature. Just because you're in a relationship a friendship does not necessarily mean that you're immature or you're mature it's that we grow older we decide that we like different things we don't have the same things in common so therefore yeah we're going to grow older we're going to grow apart we're going to find other people that you know pique our interests we're going to have friends that we see that we have more things in common with and i just feel like with you know lisa's situation and charmaine's situation they've kind of grown apart you know what I mean? Charmaine has found friends that, you know, she's able to do things that 
she and her friends like. They have more in common. They probably sit around and talk about work, you know, work-related things of that nature. And that may be something that Lisa cannot relate to because why? She doesn't work with them. She's not an intern at Charmaine's dream job. She's her best friend. Now, like I was saying to y'all before, some people put a little bit too much emphasis on being somebody's friend. And some people put a little bit too much emphasis on being a best friend. Now, let me tell you something, Lisa. You and Charmaine been best friends since grade school. Y'all not best friends like that anymore because if you guys were actually still best friends, then a best friend to me is somebody who calls you constantly. You guys are together. Y'all don't go years without speaking to one another. That is your friend. And maybe not even your friend like that now because you guys really don't keep in touch with one another. But she may be just like an associate. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who's an associate. And I just think like with today's world and today's, you know what I'm saying, the way things are today, a lot of people put too much emphasis on the word friend. Like just because you met them last week or last month doesn't mean that's necessarily your friend. A friend is someone who is there for you. A friend is someone who, you know, you're with, you talk to, you care for, you love. A friend is someone who literally doesn't do anything to be petty or spiteful or to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? That's what a friend to me is. A, that's what a friend is. You don't literally hurt the person on purpose. But to me, Charmaine don't really seem like she's a friend because why? She don't want to wound and already the freaking hurt Lisa. She didn't get that shit two times. Like me personally, I would just reach out to her. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say like, girl, let's go out. Let's go do a girl's trip or something like that. That's not what I'm going to do. But as a friend and as a former best friend, I would definitely reach out to you to see how you're doing and how life is treating you since we haven't spoken to one another in so long. And as a friend and as a former best friend, I would definitely let you know, like, Girl, you remember that time when we were supposed to go to the music festival together, but you thought I was going to take my boyfriend, but it was a planned girl trip? Well, you know, that was hurtful to me, but, you know, I got over that. I apologize. But, girl, you remember the time when I was supposed to, we were supposed to, we, we were supposed to be at the hotel that your father paid for the night before your graduation so that I could do your makeup for your graduation. Well, remember how you said you was going home, but you actually really didn't. You went out and you rented the hotel room out with your friends from work. And I seen you on your social media page taking flicks. Like that's what grownups do. And that's what friends do. They explain how they feel to one another. They explain what them pissed them the fuck off. They explain how it made them feel. But someone or some people just don't do that. You know what I'm saying? And Lisa is the one type where she didn't say nothing to Charmaine about it. Like I said, me personally, bitch, I would have definitely said something. I wouldn't have said nothing at her graduation, but I would have definitely let it be known. Bitch, I seen you. I seen you. And I'm put an NT at the end of it. I seen you. I seen you. I seen you, not seen, I seen you. I seen your ass in the club, or I seen your ass twerking. Bitch, I seen you in your pictures in the hotel room with your little fucking co-worker friends where we were supposed to be, bitch, I seen you. Okay, this is what I would say. I just feel like, you know what? It's cool to be her associate, and it's cool to be able to, you know what I'm saying, mend things as in... When I say men things, I don't mean like, let's men things and let's be the best of friends, bitch. No, I don't mean that shit. When I say men things, I mean like, you know, I just want to get something off my chest. Don't nobody, let me tell you something. Don't nobody want to go to their grave with a heavy heart. And not only not even to their grave, because I shouldn't have said that, but I don't think like it's a positive thing. And I don't think it's a good thing to go through life with a heavy heart when somebody hurts you. You know what I'm saying? Like some things... We do have to get off our chest. Some things we do need to voice. Sometimes some things are just left best alone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like like what Lisa did, for example. Maybe it was best for her and her interest to not say anything. You know what I'm saying? Because, for one, I don't already said something to you about it. And I'm noticing the difference in change. Sometimes what you need to do is you got to walk away. And I know that may be hard for some people because they really do care about their so-called best friends or their friends in general. Some people, it's really hard. Some people, they really take their friendship 
serious. And I think like with Lisa, she takes it serious. And that's unfortunate that Charmaine don't feel that way. And it's unfortunate that there's not a lot of people that are like that these days that, you know what I'm saying, take their friendship serious. But it is what it is. This is this is the world. This is reality. This is how we have to deal with shit. But I really do feel like, you know, in her situation, maybe it was best that she didn't say nothing to Charmaine about it. It was just best left the fuck alone. And like I said, me personally, I would have said something. I would have voiced my opinion, but I would have definitely did it when the timing was, you know what I'm saying, when the timing was right. At the time, during the graduation, it definitely was not the right time. But I would not have let years go by without saying anything. Like, for sure, I definitely wouldn't have done that. But years have gone by, and each person has went on with their lives, and... Some things you just got to leave alone. Like, I know I'm giving you guys, you can do it this way because there's different ways that you can handle a situation. But sometimes things just have to be left alone. But if you really care for that person, I would definitely reach out to her, see how she's doing, see what she's been up to, how's her life, you know what I'm saying? How's her job going? Did she actually end up keeping the job and her dream job? You know, see how it's going. And if the opportunity arises where you're able to voice your opinion about the situation, then I definitely would say something. You know what I'm saying? I definitely would let her know, like, this is how you made me feel at this particular time because I thought we were friends. And I understand that you do have other friends, but you don't have to lie to me. You always have to let the person know that there's always a positive ending. Okay, especially when you're trying to make up with somebody or you're trying to rectify a situation. You always want to let the person know, like, listen, there's positivity at the end of this conversation that I'm having with you. Even though I might feel like I'm being negative or you may feel like the mood that I'm in is negative, there's always a positive. There's going to be a positive ending, and I just want you to realize that. So with Lisa and Charmaine, should Lisa reach out to her and still remain to be her friend? I think, like, it's possible. Is it possible to be the best of friends? I don't think so. You know, when we are adults and we grow up, we, you know, we move on. We have a relationship. We have a family. We just basically move on. And I'm not saying that it's unhealthy, and I'm not saying that, oh, fuck fuck Charmaine. I wouldn't even fuck with her anymore. Like, I mean, I, me personally, I probably wouldn't fuck with her anymore because listen, if you did that shit once to me, how many more times are you going to do that shit to me? Like I'm good. I'm good Charmaine, but not everybody thinks like me and not everybody may feel the same way. And I think one of those people are Lisa. She doesn't feel that way. She wants to rekindle her friendship. And trust me, like I said, there's nothing wrong with it, but sweetheart, don't go kissing bitches' asses to be their friends because I guarantee you that if you're the type of friend who wants to stay friends with someone and you're loyal, you will definitely find someone that is worthy of your friendship by all means. You will definitely find someone that is worthy of your friendship. You don't have to go around kissing nobody's ass. But I definitely wouldn't allow someone to make me feel lesser than a person. Okay, and I definitely wouldn't allow someone to get over and keep lying to me. And then there's the other there's the other factor where sometimes some people it's not even worth your time, you know what I'm saying, or your energy. And Charmaine just may be one of those people who are just not worth your energy. Maybe back in high school she was because y'all was into the same fucking things. But now that y'all have gotten older and more mature, y'all ain't into the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she likes to party and hang out with those type of people. You don't know what they have in common. But Sometimes people are just not worth your energy. And with that being said, you just got to walk away and leave it alone. Because now we both grown. We both mature. You got your own set of friends. She got her own set of friends. And that's what it is. If I come across you in the street, I'm going to bust your ass. No. If I come across you in the street, I'm going to definitely acknowledge you and see what's up. And sometimes it ain't even worth bringing that old shit the fuck up. Because for what? It was already been done, did, and said. And that's past that. I'm past that shit, bitch. I'm going to let you know that I'm not even harboring no feelings and I'm definitely not going to let you know that you done got me in my feelings. So sometimes you just got to leave it the fuck alone and when I see you, I see you. Not when I see you, I see you. We about to get it popping, but you don't understand what I'm saying. When I see you, I see you and I'm going to just let it be at that and I'm going to just let you know you ain't get the best of me. You did the sneaky shit. Now, are you going to invite me out? Listen, if y'all do come across one another or y'all do decide to speak to one another again or you do decide to reach out to her, Lisa, to Charmaine, you know what I'm saying? Just be cordial. Me personally, I would just see how she was doing. I wouldn't even bring up that old shit. You know why? Because for me, as the person I am, you did that shit to me then. That means twice you did the shit to me. Not to mention there might have been some other times too that you personally just don't know about. You know what I'm saying? And... 
I'm not going to go through it with you. Like, I don't, I feel like this. If you hurt me once, okay, and we apologize and we get over that. But if you do this shit again to me and you don't think I found out about it, that means to me that you're doing this shit to be spiteful or not even spiteful but you know what the fuck you're doing you done did it to me on purpose that means that you don't really consider me a friend like you used to because you've met met new people and i'm not about to be put back in that zone the friend zone with you like that like we were close true indeed we were close at one time and now we're not i'm not gonna go through it with you if i see you i see you or i may just reach out to you only because i'm interested in knowing how you're doing because I am still interested in you as a person and I stick and I still care for you. But making plans with you, I'm not about to do that because we've already made plans. And me personally, I hate being disappointed and let down for anything. Any fucking thing. That's why I don't ask people for much of help or for anything because I don't like the word no. I definitely don't like the fucking word no. So for you to let me down more than once is a disappointment. And for two, especially if you did the shit on purpose, like, okay, I let you get away with scenario one, but bitch, I'm not about to let you get away with the shit over and over. So I really think like me personally, it's great to rekindle a friendship with somebody, but is that person really worth your time and energy? No, because at the end of the day, you already know. That bitch probably going to do some grimy shit. Are you going to still harbor those same feelings? And sometimes people are left just best alone, regardless if you've been in school with them all your life. Sometimes you just got to leave shit the fuck alone and carry on with your life. That's sometimes being a bigger person. That's what we call being a bigger person. You ain't had to mention the shit and you did the right thing by not mentioning it. But sometimes we just got to leave it the fuck alone because let me tell you something. When you confront people with some shit, some people don't like being confronted. And then when you do confront somebody, you know the truth, but they don't know that you know the truth. They still lying about the shit? That shit pissed you the fuck off. I know it pissed me the fuck off when I'm asking somebody something, I'm confronting them, and then they telling me some other shit that I already know is a lie that's still coming out your mouth. That shit will piss me off. It's going to get me more angry just fucking talking to you, and you still lying to me. So Charmaine seemed like the type that, you know what I'm saying? She ain't like no real friend, real friend like that. She seemed like the type who's going to go ahead and lie and deny the shit. And okay, bitch, you got that. But don't don't work yourself up by trying to be her friend. And don't definitely don't work yourself up by confronting her. You know what I'm saying? Like some people are just left, are just best left the fuck alone, unfortunately. I try not to bring no bad vibes and karma around me because for real, I don't have the fucking patience for the shit. Nor do I want to. So I just leave people the fuck alone and carry on my life. If it's not fucking with you mentally like that, then leave it the fuck alone. But if it is and you just want to just basically reach out and see how she's doing, then just do that. But don't bring up no old shit, okay? Unless you really feel the need to. And if you do, go about it in the right way. Meaning, don't let that bitch know that it got the best of you and you still harboring over the shit. Because some people like to feel like, oh, you still worried about that shit? That was like four years ago, bitch. Are you still on it like that? <sighs> Trust me, when I tell you that's how people are in general, don't let her know that that shit made you sweat. Okay? Straight up. So now we're going to move on okay, to the you guys. So this is the second real talk. And unfortunately, it's a little late, like a few weeks late. But it's better than not doing it at all because I don't want anyone to think that way. So this is basically about some, you know, marijuana, weed smoke, you know. Hey, I like it. Hi, April. You can call me Liz. I have been watching you for about two years now, and I live for Real Talk. I love your realness and all your advice. I have always wanted to send you an email, but I never had the courage to do so until today. I'm 22 years old, and I have a one-year-old baby. My boyfriend, who was 24, and I moved in together when our son was nine months. When we started dating in 2014, I knew he smoked weed, and I was kind of I was kind of okay with it due to us being in college and we were so young. I still wanted him to have fun doing the things he liked, but it always bothered me when he smoked all day, every day. So fast forward to now. We have been together for four years and he cannot quit smoking. It has gotten out of hand. He wants to smoke before work and after work and at night and all the fucking time. I'm not okay with that, especially since we have a baby. There has been times when he has left the baby at his parents while I was at work just so he could go smoke. Don't get me wrong. He works hard and pays his bills and is very responsible with the things he has to get done but it has but it's as if he doesn't care about me or how I feel about him smoking and why I want him to quit I have threatened to leave him so many times and he says sorry and changes for a week but then goes back to his old ways all of his friends smoke which it makes it harder 
I even tried to compromise with him to where he could smoke every other day, but only at night after the baby was asleep. And that still didn't work. At this point, I feel as if he doesn't love me or he just wish he was with someone that smoked. We argue about this constantly. When he stops smoking for about three days, he starts getting in a really bad mood and then continues. I don't know what to do, April. Should I leave him or stick around and wait for him to change? If you don't post on video, can you please reply back to email? I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I've attached a picture of all three of us. So let's see. Did she give me her name? She said, you can call me Liz. So basically, Liz and her boyfriend have been together for four years. When they first met, she already knew that he smoked weed. You know what I'm saying? She was always very, she was already very aware of that shit. You know what I'm saying? But they was in college, so she felt like, you know, we young. This is what he does. And, you know, basically when he gets older, he'll probably stop. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. Now they got a baby together and he's still smoking. He smokes before work. He smokes after work. He smokes at night. He leaves the baby with his mother so that he could go smoke. His friend smokes. He tried to compromise with him by telling him, you know, you could smoke every other day, but only at night. You know, when he doesn't smoke, he gets agitated. He becomes probably aggressive, mean, irritated. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And she can't take it no more. You know, they constantly argue if he doesn't smoke. You know what I'm saying? They constantly argue about him smoking. They just constantly arguing about the fucking weed shit in general. And it's unfortunate because, let me tell you something. Even though we all like to smoke, or not even all, we all, because we all don't like to smoke. Not everybody smokes weed. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody drinks. You know what I'm saying? It's your preference and i'm i'll be the first one to sit here and tell you guys yeah i i do smoke weed too i'm not that'll make me a bad person it's gonna make me better than you it's just the things that i like to do but i will say this i do not allow that shit to interfere interfere with what the fuck i need to be get done i don't let it fear interfere with my lifestyle i don't let it interfere with my priorities i keep my priorities in order because i do know I know for me, when I do smoke, I get lethargic. I don't want to do anything. I get lazy. I get tired. I don't like to drive outside if I'm, you know, under the influence of any type of, you know, marijuana or any type of prescribed drug. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I just don't want to drive outside like that. And I, me personally, I really cannot function too well if I'm high, okay, under the influence. I can't function too well. So I do not allow those things to come to play and basically interfere with my daily functions. And I will say that some people, it's okay for them. Some people, they don't allow it to interfere with what they need to be done. Some people, it doesn't affect them to where they're tired and lethargic and, you know what I'm saying, they, they, they're they lazy. It doesn't, it doesn't affects everybody the same way but then again it does affect other people that don't smoke okay or don't smoke weed before and after work and during work and you know saying that affects people and like like they say birds of a feather flock together that may necessarily not be the case in this situation but i will say this like it's unfortunate that this is a young couple who's 24 years old. She's 24 years old now. They got a baby together. And her boyfriend, which is the father of her child, he likes to engage in marijuana. Okay? Now, it's not like an illegal drug in most states. In some states, it is. It's, it can be a bad habit. Especially if you are definitely letting it interfere with the shit that you need to be done. Or if it's interfering with your moods and your actions and the way you are as a person, then that's the time where you basically need to step back and look at yourself. Now, this is the family. They got a family together. And they arguing about something so minute and then not minute uh, you know what i'm saying like i can say it's minute because me personally i don't let it affect me as a person i don't let it affect me getting money i don't let it affect what i need to do in life i don't let it affect me personally but it's affecting her living situation meaning their relationship what they got going on at home they, they arguing they arguing around a baby you know what i'm saying which is not healthy that's not healthy for the baby to see you guys arguing. Regardless of how old the child is, it's not healthy for the child to see you guys arguing over something like that. And on top of that, you guys got a baby. If you want to smoke weed, that's one thing. If you want to drink, that's one thing. But let me tell you guys, that shit costs money. That shit builds up. If you smoking weed before and after work and at nighttime, that means you look at least lit up three to four times a day. You know what I'm saying? Which could be like $20 a day, which could be more than $20 a day. That shit adds up. And sometimes we have to look at shit and go at shit like in a different manner. We can't just approach the situation like, you know what? 
um, babe, I'm tired of you smoking all the time. I'm tired of you drinking. I'm tired of you just doing this. You know, we got to look at it. We got to approach the situation differently. Now, it's, un it's unfortunate, like I said, that they argued over something like this that can easily be resolved. This is his bad habit, and I'm not really sure what your bad habit is, Liz, but everybody got a habit, regardless if it's a bad habit. It may be something that you do that just irritates him. You guys need to really sit down and compromise with one another because this is money that, okay, yeah, he works for this money and he works hard and he pays bills, but this is also money that is being freaking um, taken out of paychecks and funds, household funds that could be saved and you could do th other things together. I'm not saying y'all got to save up for your kid's college, but you guys can save up for maybe a car or a brand new car or a house or just things in general that you could save up to. When you think about it, even like if you smoke cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes is like what, 10, 11, 12 hours, depending on what state you're in. But if you smoke cigarettes constantly, that money is like adding the fuck up. Even if it's $10 a day or $10 every two days, that adds up. You, you, you think about it, it's like $30 to $70 a week. Some people smoke more than one pack of cigarettes a day. So this is money being wasted, okay? Just like how I feel about the lottery. You ain't winning the lottery every fucking day but you wasting that money and this money when you think about it after a certain amount of time over time even a month this money could have been added up to pay a bill or this money could have been added up to save for a trip or to go somewhere nice or take it out or just buy something we need you know what i'm saying these are things that people don't realize in the end of the day when you smoke so much weed or you drink so much or you smoke so much cigarettes or if your bad habit is costing you enough during a daily basis or just not enough, but enough, like $10 every day for a pack of cigarettes is like that shit, $70 a week. Can you imagine what you can do with like $70 a week? And I'm just going to say 70 because I'm just going to use the word $10. And I'm just going to say like the person smokes a pack a day. $70 a week is a lot and it's not a lot. Like I can pay a bill with $70 and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of you guys that can. And not to mention it's also a bad habit. Did I used to smoke? Of course I did. And what did I do? I quit. I quit because... First of all, it doesn't really smell that great. It's not really good for your health, but it's also not really good for your pocket. Okay, your bank account. $70. I'm not, I didn't smoke a pack a day, but $35, $40 a week adds the fuck up. That's gas money, okay? And when you think about it, all of this money that you invested into a bad habit could have been put to better use. So what I think you need to do, Liz, is to sit down with him and explain it to him like this instead of coming at him like, oh, I don't like your weed smoke and oh, you smoke too much and oh, this, you know, sometimes when you nag somebody, it just goes in that ear and goes right the fuck out. Like it just passes, passes through that ear so fast, girl, faster than light. Like that should just go right through his motherfucking and he's not hearing you, especially if you are coming at him in such a way to where it's nagging and y'all are ending up in arguments over it. And when you ended up in arguments over something, then it has become a form of lack of communication, like straight up, it becomes a form of lack of communication. And I'm not saying that I've been the best at communicating because if had I was, then maybe I would not never got divorced and my marriage would have lasted, you know what I'm saying? Um, I will be honest and say that I did get tired of the drinking and my husband does and he did at the time smoke weed too, but it wasn't that, that habit. It was the drinking. So I did get tired of that, but in return of being tired, I started arguing about it and I started nagging about it, thinking that that would make the situation stop or it would make the situation better. It just made things worse. So it's, it's unfortunate that we have to resource to nagging and arguing with the person to make them realize that this habit that they have, you know, festered on is becoming an issue in our relationship. And, you know, some people really don't understand when you come at them so verbal and so aggressive. They take it as a form of like they have to put up their defense. OK, and like I'll be the first to tell you, if you come at me verbally and it's very aggressive, I am definitely going to defend myself regardless of what the issue is, whether it be good or bad for me. I'm definitely going to be on the defense mode. And with this being said, you guys are arguing. So it has become something really aggressive. It has become an issue to where you're constantly saying something to him about it. But he's not making the situation any better because he's not trying to compromise with you. And maybe if you go about it a different way, like come at him with a different angle, then maybe he'll understand where you're coming from. Some people, you got to just come at them differently in order for them to understand. And that's just a part of life. You know what I'm saying? And with men, I think like they don't really understand. Like when we come at them and we're just spewing and we're saying 
like, you need to stop, you need to stop. They feel like that's a form of nagging. But in reality, it may be, but also in reality, it may not be. It may just be a way of me letting you know how I care about you and this is what I feel like you need to do. Take my son, for example. He's 20 and he likes to smoke weed too. You know, it's legal out here. So he, he likes to smoke weed too. Um, and I, trust me when I tell you, I get tired of seeing him come in high off of weed or I just get tired of seeing him, you know, going out to get weed like i get tired of it because later on what you're going to do you're going to come and ask me can i borrow twenty dollars because i don't got no money or can i borrow some money to get through the work like dude if you wouldn't have spent all your motherfucking hard-earned money on marijuana maybe you would have to come and fucking ask me to borrow some shit okay maybe you would have cleaned up the kitchen better after yourself or getting something to eat so these are the things that i notice in my household or with my own you know what i'm saying like okay so you smoke and then you get hungry and then you go in the kitchen and you make yourself something to eat and you so high or you just high in general that you don't even realize that you just left a mess behind or the mess that you did leave behind, you cleaned it up. But you didn't really clean it up like your sober self. You cleaned it up like your high self. And which means that that shit ain't good enough for me. And that starts to irritate me. And what do I do? I go in and I go off on him. Oh, you need to get in here and clean the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? He don't want to hear me yelling at him all the time. However, you're not making it no better. You ain't trying to compromise with me. Take your ass to work. Now, going to work high is so not cool. Okay? It's definitely not cool at all. And this is what Liz's boyfriend is doing. He going to work high. How the fuck do you function at work high? This is what you do need to tell him because for one let me tell you something when we go to work it don't matter how good we in with these people it don't mean it don't matter how cool we are how much they work they like our worth ethic etc etc somebody always got something to motherfucking say at your job place regardless of how cool y'all all may seem together regardless of oh yeah that's my girl she worked real good or you know bob he worked real good at work and he, but you always got somebody in the cut who don't like you or just hate it and they got something to say people seem to always acknowledge the fact when you do something wrong but when you do something right you really don't get too many praises you don't get no rewards for that shit you don't get any pats on the motherfucking back you don't get any acknowledgments but the moment you fuck up the moment you fuck up that's when you are acknowledged and your boyfriend really needs to be aware and, and realize that like listen it's one thing to smoke and be high but at your place of employment this is where you need to take it serious because not only is that your place of employment but this is how we live. This is how we eat. This is how we survive. Me, you, and our child. So I would totally advise you to have a talk with him about going to work high because you never know what the job situation. Jobs may not have freaking um, drug tested you or alcohol tested you ever, but you never know what may decide to pop up at the job place that one particular day when your boyfriend takes his ass, his high ass to work, okay? That might be the day when he pops into work and they was like, oh, you know what, Bob? We just are a new company policy today that been in the works. But unfortunately, you weren't aware of that. But we're going to be drug testing at least once a month. Now, their days are not going to be set. There's no scheduled days. It's just a random day. So today is the day. And we're going to need your urine specimen. We're going to need your urine sample just to make sure that everything is copacetic on the job and everybody is at their full work capacity and they're, 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 they're there. So, um, you know, I do apologize for the inconvenience, Bob, but you're going to have to piss in this cup. You know what I'm saying? Here, Bob, here's a, pu a cup. We're going to need your urine specimen. And that's the day when Bob gets fucked up at work. And then he comes in maybe a day or so later. And, you know, the lab testing came back. And they got to bring him in the office, human resources. And they're like, you know, you're a hard worker. We really love your work ethic. You get things done. But we have a very strict policy here. Unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go. Because your urine came back and you were high off of marijuana. And I'm sorry to have to let you go. But this is our new company policy. So... You didn't lost your job, Bob, because you got a bad habit and you like to go to work and you like to be high. And now you not not only have you lost your motherfucking job, but your kids and your baby mama and your wife or girlfriend or whatever you want to call them has also lost the income. Now we got to scrimp and save and figure out how the fuck we're gonna get by because Bob decided he wanna be high every morning or every afternoon or evening shift before he goes in at work. And now that he done fucked that up. What are we supposed to do? You have to bring it to him like that. You got to give him bullet points. You got to give him an example of what can be done. And a lot of times what's going to happen if you tell him like in that scenario, like I just gave you, oh, they're not going to do that. How the fuck do you know? You don't know that. You don't really 
No, you're not really aware of what can go down at a job place. Policies change, companies change, all types of things change. And this is company policy. This is a safety measure. So he don't really know if his job is going to piss test him at any given moment. And to go to work high like that is just putting not only him in jeopardy, but you guys. And to me, that's not a form of being responsible. Like you said, he's responsible. He pays his bills. That's cool. I think people should pay their bills. You know what I'm saying? If you want to survive and live in the world, that is a form of being responsible. But if you're going to work high, that is not a form of being responsible. That's not an adult thing. That's not what we do when we adults and we got a job. We don't go to work high. Who the fuck does that? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere high except for in my own domain, like in my house. If I smoke, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not driving nowhere. I'm not going outside, okay? Because I've already done that and been there and done that. And let me tell you something. I drive like Miss Daisy, okay? Real motherfucking slow when I'm high off some weed. And I really need to have all of my senses there. And not only that, but now she's saying me, she's telling me that he, he smokes before he goes to work. How is he getting to work? Is he driving to work? So now you driving and you under the influence, and somebody could just pop out in front of you at no given time, and your reflexes and your senses might be a little bit off because you didn't smoke before you went to work. So now here it is, you done gotten into an accident, or better yet, you might have been driving too slow like me, or you might have been driving too fast, and here we go with the law pulling you over, and then they find out you hide. Now you in jail, and you done missed work with no call, no show, because you got arrested because you was under influence. So then you got arrested, you got to get bailed out, and not only did you no show at work and no call, but you got your ass fired. All because of what? A motherfucking blunt? Not even worth it. And a lot of times, people that are young and a lot of people that are my age, they don't think about shit like this. There's always a fucking consequence to some dumb shit that you do. You have to think about the shit beforehand. And instead of you yelling at him and going at him and nagging at him because that shit ain't working. And I'm not saying you yelling at him is a bad thing, but... You gotta try. You have to try a different approach to the situation. Like me personally, I cannot be around somebody that want to smoke all day, every day. Like that shit is lame as fuck. Like seriously. And if anybody out there that's watching this smoke all day, no shade against you, but me personally, I couldn't see myself smoking all day, and I couldn't want to hang around somebody that want to smoke all day because that's like I said, that shit is lame as fuck. And I think like there's a whole lot of other things that you need to do with your time and your money well spent. Okay. And now he got friends that get high. Okay. You cannot change his friends. Um, that's unfortunate. You cannot change who he hangs around. That's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? So those problems are going to occur. But the one thing you can try to change and fester in his mind and put in his mindset is this, what I just said. You cannot go to work high. And we are trying to build a family, a foundation. Let's build it by starting to save and not spend our money on frivolous things. So if you tell him these things and, and, and instill this in him and let him see where you're coming from, you could best believe, sweetheart, that you're going to have to change something about yourself. If he's spending money on weed all the time, then you also have to budget your money the same way and go along with the same thing that you said. You may like to buy flip-flops every fucking day of the week. I don't know. I'm just going to use that as an example. They might be a dollar. They might be two, but that should add the fuck up. You might like to buy lip gloss and makeup every week. I don't know. Whatever you like, you, you definitely will purchase it. You have to stop what you're doing just so that way he's not the only one that's left out there in the field, you know what I'm saying, surrounded by nothing but a bunch of grass by his lonesome while you in the house with the baby and you still buying shit while he's stuck out there. You need to also compromise. You got to compromise too. And a lot of times people don't see it like that, but it's true. If I... Let's see. Let's take, for example, I like to go to the dollar store. Everybody knows I love to go to the Dollar Tree. I love it. I could spend like $40, 50 bucks a week there. I'm not saying I buy junk, but I do buy some things that I may not need necessarily because I guarantee you if I go to the Dollar Tree and I'm going there for household things, maybe I should just walk in and get the household things and leave out and not purchase anything. So let's just say that I spend 40, 50 bucks at the Dollar Tree every week. And let's just say that my husband likes to smoke weed every single day, like like Bob, maybe like four or five times a day. That adds up and so does mine add up, okay? So let's just say his his weed smoke is like $50, $50, $60, $100 a week. And my $100 a week and my Dollar Tree spending sprees are like 60 bucks a week. Even though I don't need all, like nobody needs $60 worth of Dollar Tree shit a week, okay? Like that's serious, okay? So if I'm telling him he needs to cut down on the spending, then what do I need to do? I need to do the same, okay? I need to do the same. Whatever it is my habit is that I really like to do every week or every day and I'm spending, I got to compromise with this man too because it's not going to be right. 
what I'm saying? It's a compromise. We are agreeing on something. We are working together. And he's not working together with you right now about that because that's his bad habit. So maybe if you stop your bad habit and you compromise and you go to him and you, you just approach him a lot differently versus yelling arguing then maybe he'll see where you coming from some people like i said you gotta approach in a totally different way you can't go to them being all vulgar and aggressive because then they take that shit as being oh you offended me or you're attacking me let me put up my fucking wall right now and my shield because i'm not about to let you fucking attack me verbally and be so aggressive to me some people don't like that. Some people it works and some people it doesn't. I'm pretty sure 90%, 99.9% of the time, it doesn't work with a lot of us. And that's how many people probably don't like to be approached aggressive. Because when we approach aggressive, we do take matters into our own hand. And we do strike back and we do go about it differently. But when we are approached in a logical manner and a more humanly-like approach, then we, we are able to rationalize with you. We are able to sit there and think about it. And I think like the main key is to let him know like listen I understand this is your job but it's your job and it's also my job and it's also our child's job and this is how we survive and I understand that you enjoy smoking weed but can we just not smoke before work and during work how about you just when you come home you smoke at night you know and if he cannot wait till the baby sleep then allow him to go outside or into another room depending on the weather but I would definitely approach him as to his job performance because, like I said, you don't know what job is going to decide to change their company's policy today or tomorrow. It's no guarantee. And um, a drug test, they don't give you a motherfucking date for that shit. They just pop that shit up on you because it's a drug test. They don't want you to get clean the day or day before or the week before. They want you to come in as the fuck is and they want to see if they can catch your ass the fuck out there. Because if you come into work as is and you're supposed to, as you're supposed to, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay? But I think, like, number one important key is to, you know, instill in him, like, going to work like that high is not cool at all. You on the road. You don't know if you're going to hit somebody or you're going to hit something or you're going to get pulled over or you're going to get drug tested at work. You don't know. These are all possibilities. And this is all reality. And this is all real. Like, we don't know what's going to happen to us when we step outside that door. Okay, and get in our cars or get on our public transportation. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen to us that day we go and work. We might be all good honky dory. Okay, don't even don't even smoke. Don't even drink. We can just go into work. And that day it could be like, you know, hey, April, come into the office. You know, I really like your work performance, but we're downsizing today. And you're going to be the first to go. I, I'm, I, I'm so sorry about this last minute. And it was in the works, but there was nothing we could say to anybody until we made it final. And it's finalized. So I do apologize, but this is going to be your last week here. I don't know that. I don't know. Anything is possible. We don't know what the fuck we were walking into. This is everyday life. Like when you leave that door, when you leave your house, you don't know what the fuck is possible to happen to you. Whether it be good or fucking bad, you don't fucking know. Not everybody lets you know what the fuck is going on at work. The universe don't let you know what the fuck is going to happen to you when you step outside that door. You could wake up in the morning and step outside your bed and fall and break your motherfucking ankle. Or you could walk down the steps and somebody could have left something in your ass bust your motherfucking ass okay you don't know these things i'm sorry the sun is like really sucking up my lighting um but you don't know these things and it's you know this is life this is how it is this is what the fuck happens so i really think like with you liz you really need to let him know like listen bob straight up you need to chill you need to realize what you're doing is not just affecting you but it's affecting all of us as a whole. And I just need you to realize that we're older and I understand this is what you enjoy doing, but just please look at it from where I'm coming from. This is not just going to affect you. This is going to affect us all. And this is the reason why I need you to stop. Point blank, period. Just that simple. And if he doesn't want to stop and he wants to continue, then girl, sometimes we have to just put our foot down and... I'm not saying that I would run a break up a happy home, but I will say this. If it is really something that's affecting your lifestyle and your home mentally, physically, then it may be some changes that you need to make to yourself. Okay, if it's getting out of hand, it's escalating to bad arguments where they become physical, then it's something that you're going to have to change to yourself. And sometimes we have to walk away from shit just so the situation can get better. Take me for an example. I had to. 
okay I went at my husband back and forth back and forth for a few years about his drinking and I finally could not take it no more and what did I do I packed my shit up and I got the fuck up out of Schenectady New York and came to Arizona because his drinking was not only affecting him but it was also affecting my home and I left and not only did I leave but two years later I turned around and I divorced him and look my outcome changed his outcome he doesn't drink he's clean he's been clean for a couple of years and that's good for him and sometimes like I said we got to walk away from the situation just so it can get better you know what I'm saying it may be hard and it may be hurtful but sometimes people feel like you are their crutch or they're your crutch and you need them and you have to prove them wrong like listen I really don't need you I can do this on my own and at least I can try to do this on my own I would like to be with you and I would like to need you and I would like for us to need one another and I would like for us to be as a couple and I would like to raise our family together but you're making this difficult and right now it's best for me to walk away and to leave the situation and hopefully you're able to work things out for your motherfucking self and carry on with life and maybe we'll get back together but i just feel like try to approach the situation a little bit differently this time and explain to him about the work thing because listen it's work this is where we make our bread and butter okay this work this is how we live this is how we eat this is how we we survive don't go to work jeopardizing your job over some fucking drug we we don't give a fuck about you we just want to be smoked Okay, we don't give a fuck about you. It just want to be smoked. Whoever selling it to you, they don't give a fuck about you. They just want that paper. They could care less if you go to work high. They could care less if you go to work high or not. They just know that they want that money, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever you're giving them. They just know this. And why jeopardize something that's really important? Because having a job is motherfucking important. I don't know to who it ain't. Everybody work. Everybody have a job. Everybody work. I don't give a fuck if you a bum on the street and you got a sign. That's your motherfucking job because you you got that sign up for a reason. Right? So your ass can survive. I don't give a fuck if you Beyonce singing on stage. That's her motherfucking job. If she don't work, if she don't sing, then she ain't going to get paid. And then what's going to happen to her, Blue Ivy, Jay-Z, and whatever the other kids' names are? They're going to be on the street. That's like me. If I don't work, if I don't make wigs, I don't do my videos, that's my job. Then I ain't going to get paid. So everybody has a job to do. Regardless if you're a street hooker, a bum pan handling, or whatever. It's a job. Regardless if you say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I got my own business. It's a motherfucking job. Okay? And I'm not about to jeopardize my money on anything or anybody so that way I don't have no money. Listen, let me tell you something. Being high is not cool. I have not. I, okay. I've done a video high before. And what did I do with that? When I re tried to edit that video? Girl, please, I didn't even edit the video. I freaking looked at myself and was like, why did you even do that video like that, girl? You thought nobody was going to even notice, but I'm looking at myself like you eating Skittles and licking your lips a little bit too much. So now you're going to have to do the whole entire video all over again. And whose fault was that? My own, okay? You don't always got to be <laughs> jeopardizing what the fuck we got going on, okay? Granted, there are a lot of people that like to be high and smoke ganja, marijuana, whatever, but keep in mind that it may affect your life and it may not affect your lifestyle. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that say, oh, girl, it don't affect me, please. I smoke all day. I'm cool. That's probably because your ass is fucking immune to the shit. You ain't even getting high. But I know for me that it will affect me. I'll just be sitting there on the couch like, let me make this wig. Okay. So, on that note, you guys, let Liz know what you think. On that note, let Liz know how you feel. Let the other young lady know how you feel. This, oh, my God. Really though, son, like seriously, this is how you're going to do me. So you're going to just put a shadow of light, cast a shadow of light on my fucking face in a certain area and just darken the rest of me. Like, where are we doing this at? Is the sun really like doing me dirty like this today? Like, ugh, now I got a light over my mouth and shit. God dang. Like, for real. Ugh. This is like bullshit. Well, anyway, you guys, I'm about to go. I'm going to go ahead and try these Montique jeans on. If you guys have a pair of those Montique jeans, let me know how you feel about them. What do you like about them? What do you dislike about them? Do they fit nice? How's your booty looking in them? Because, girl, let me tell y'all, I was feeling them, but them, they just kept ripping. Like, I know for next time, never... <laughs>
listen i love distressed jeans don't get me wrong i do i love them they trend and i try to be a hip grandmother okay but dang i know for the next time not to buy something too distressed because let me tell you guys when they start ripping on you like i had this big area on my thigh right here that was open like this big area on my thigh let me see if i can show you my thigh like this big area right here had a distressed portion like it was big cut out but every time, like, not every time, but a few times, because after the first time, I realized that you better bend your leg, bend your knee a little bit more careful. Every time, uh, every few times that I bent my knee up or bent over to put my sock on, girl, I heard was, it was a little bit of tear. So the jeans, like I said, they ripped like two or three times in that certain area by my thigh. Now I'm going to have to go fix it up. But they not even distressed no more. Them, them shits look like they about to be stressed. Stressed. These motherfuckers are stressed jeans, okay? And the jeans that they sent me, though, are really cute. I just know for next time from anywhere not to get something that's cut up too much because that shit will eventually start really ripping. And then there'll be nothing left to the jeans but a bunch of holes and some thread. And you'll be walking around with some G-strings on, some stressed out G-strings. So, I love you guys. Stay Diva and Divalicious. I'm sorry about the lighting, you guys. I really am. But I really wanted to get ready for this video. And I figured the best time to do it would be for you guys, you know? Uh, you can't really see my makeup, but hey. It's just basic. I'm really, really basic. Um, I don't... Ooh. Earpiece got me a new little earpiece. Um, I'm just really basic. I used a lot of Shop Miss A products on my face today, like my eyeshadow was Shop Miss A, my um, eyeliner was Shop Miss A, um, my highlight, all my highlight was from Shop Miss A. Okay, and you probably can't see it right now because I'm so glowed up by the sunlight that you know, but definitely check out Shop Miss A. I did this amazing new video for their new holiday collection. Girl, if you like a dollar stuff, then trust me, you will definitely love them. But yes, thanks, son. I'm I, I really want to be black in the fuck out. I guess that's my way of saying goodbye. I'm fading out slowly, you know what I'm saying? I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, leave your comments below. Hello. Send me an email to Muffin is My Lovers 2012 just so that way I can have some real talks to do. And I will see you guys on the other side. Huh? 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 Huh?